What's going on guys? Welcome to the Against All Odds podcast. If you're watching this, you're probably like, what am I watching? This is the Against All Odds podcast. It's just me today. Um, I'm on my trial right now and Mimi's all the way back in San Diego. So we're across the country right now. So we can't actually film a full on podcast. I don't have my microphone. So if you're listening to this, I know the audio quality is not like as perfect as it is with a real like podcast microphone, so I apologize. But in this podcast, I'm gonna go over my tryouts and the trial process, all from like the preparation to the how this one is actually going, how I'm mentally going into this, what I'm thinking, how to play, how to perform the best, how to pre- prepare everything, um, and then even what I'm hoping for this one and stuff like that. So, roll intro. <music> So the tryout process, you know, these trials are always really um, kind of nerve, not nerve wracking. It's just not the best situation. Um, I'm across the country right now, so pretty much I was invited through this based off basically through my agent. My agent was contacting teams, and this team needed a write back, so they basically told my agent, you know, yeah, let's bring him out. We have an invite only combine. Let's bring Matt out, and we can take a look at him there. So um, flash forward a few weeks, I told my agent that I was like, yeah, let's do it. I want to go. Uh, and then you have to pretty much pay for your own way out here. You have to pay for the hotel, um, even though if you like reduced rates and stuff. But um, that's kind of like how usually in the USL, uh, invite only combines work. An open combine or an open tryout is something that anybody can sign up for. So I've done a few of those. I've done that in Vancouver Whitecaps. I've done that with Portland Timbers. I've done the Info Sport Combine in Florida. Um, and so I, those are like literally anybody off the street can sign up for their name, pay 200, 300 bucks, and then they can try out for the team. Those open tryouts are kind of like to find the diamond in the rough. And if there is one guy that's really standing out and for whatever reason he's there, they might bring him in a preseason. That happened to me with the Vancouver Whitecaps back in 2015. I just randomly did a preseason, you know, uh, open tryout. They liked what they saw. Then they invited me and I think another guy. So it was two of us from the open tryout into preseason. So we stayed there a few week, a few weeks into Vancouver, um, into preseason. But then they cut. Uh, they had 33 guys with the Vancouver Whitecaps, and they cut it down to 15 guys after a few days of preseason. So, you know, I've talked about this before. Whether or not that was legit, whether they just wanted to bring me in to say they brought a person from the open combine to make the open combine look better or the open tryout look better, you never know. But regardless, out of all the 300 guys that showed up at the open combine or open tryout there. I was one of the top two who got selected and actually brought into preseason. So that was a really like a big confidence boost. And then when I was in there actually with the team, when I was actually training there and working with the team um, for a few five, like three or four days, it went really well. And I thought I was holding my own. I thought I was not just at the bottom of the pack. I thought I was more of the middle of the pack. Um, to be honest, I didn't think I was one of the better players. I thought I was honestly middle of the pack. Um, so even though I was cut after a few days, I was pretty happy that I was like, I can compete. I can compete at the USL level because that was the Vancouver Whitecaps too that competed in the USL. Um, so this was an invite-only combine, which means that they have to physically invite you to come out here or your agent has to talk to the coaches, but not it's not just anybody from the streets. It's usually mostly college guys, semi-pro guys, or pros like myself who are trying to get back into the USL or something like that. Um, so yeah, so it was a really, really good opportunity. I mean, these coaches, all the coaches were sitting up in the stands. They, you know, they, they, these are guys that they really are looking for, especially in a few positions to fill up the roster. Um, and then the goal from this is to either outright get a contract for that 2019 season or to get brought into preseason, which is in, in, uh, in February. So that's the goal of this. So at this, at like open tryouts and open combines, there can be anywhere from, I've been at some as low as like, I'd say 60 guys, and I've been as high as 300 guys. So it depends on the combine, it depends on the tryout, and the level varies intensely. I mean, there's since anybody can sign up for those, you get guys that are, that are kind of fresh off the street, have never really played before, but for whatever reason, they just want to sign up and have fun and try to do it, and you, then you have guys that are actually at the professional level that are playing. So it's a huge mix of players. Um, these invite-only combines are usually... Uh, it's a lot better. It's usually like the the college level D1, D2, NAI kind of college kids as well as semi-pro PDL players and, and other pros. So these are definitely a little bit higher level than the open ones. Um, so I'll go back and I'll start talking about the, my preparation for this combine and everything. Um, I've told you about how I got invited. My agent pretty much was talking to this team. This team said that they were interested in a player of my position. They were interested in me. So I got invited out here. 
Um, I booked the ticket, I booked the hotel, and I confirmed with the coaches that I was gonna be there. And um, yeah, and then so basically before, once I, once I knew that, it was two weeks. So I had two weeks, it was like right in Thanksgiving, and I knew that this is, was on December 7th and 8th, so I basically had two weeks to prepare. So what I immediately did was like, obviously, you know, anytime that you are, that you have a trial or something to prepare for, usually you're playing games. And that was like this, this is just, today was just a 90 minute game, um, two 90 minute games, that was in the first 90 minute game, but it was just a 90 minute game and you play. So you definitely want to be fit. And the fitness is something that you can really improve pretty quickly. Um, you should always be training technically, you should always be working out and have like a base. But if you have a good solid base, you can get pretty fit, like decently fit enough for a trial in one or two weeks. Now, if you're not decently fit, then it might take a little bit longer. It depends on where you're starting off. So my starting off level was like at 80% or something. And you know, I'm feeling really good. I'm, I'm maintaining in the off season, my fitness level. I'm playing you know, almost every day, playing like mini goals games. I'm doing work, I'm in the gym running. Um, I'm working out all the time. So I was, it's definitely felt like fit. Um, but now I wanted to really improve like that game real, realistic fit so that you know when you're playing that game, you, nothing in your head's like, oh, I'm tired, you know, let's, let's settle down, I need a breather. I wanted to really push it. So immediately, I started doing like cardio workouts, which you guys saw in some videos if you watch the videos. Um, but it's just kind of like John Terry, I was copying John Terry's cardio workout, which is just hop on the treadmill and let's go. So it was like 20 seconds on, 40 seconds off, you're at like a 12% incline, and the treadmill is going 11.2 miles per hour, or that's the equivalent of 18 kilometers an hour. So that's what he was doing at, so I just converted it to 11.2 miles per hour, and it was a killer. Like the first time I did it, I only did 13 and I was dead, um, and then I did 15 the next time and I was dead, then I did 15 again, and this I spaced it out like two days each, but I did 15 again and I was like decent, and then I did 15 again the next time I did it, and I was like, that was easy. So you, immediately you can see the fitness improving relatively quickly, and I felt like, yeah, I'm ready. And then tour, so like the fitness improved, and other than that, like I just continued to train, I continued to eat how I always eat, I continued to um, work out how I always work out, and then about three or four days before the combine, before I actually left for this combine, I uh, started tapering off of my leg workouts, I started tapering off of um, my training sessions, and I started tapering off of the cardio just so my body would be a little bit more fresh. So today's Friday, today was the first day of the combine, so I think on Tuesday was when I started to taper off slightly. So on Tuesday, I just got a, so, uh, a, a, a partner training session with, uh, with Sohil. We trained, it was good, but like it was more technical, smaller space, it wasn't like long balls, it wasn't any playing, it was just like let's pass the ball around, let's get our touches right, let's do some juggling, let's do some volleys. Uh, let's do some pass work, some first touch work, all stuff within like five, ten yards. So just uh, is mainly, you know, it's, it's tiring, but it's not like taxing on your body. So I did that on Tuesday, and I also got like an upper body weightlifting session in. Then Wednesday I took off, and then Thursday morning I just got like a light thing in the gym, just some biking, and then like I touched the ball a little bit, but I pretty much just was like, all right, yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready to do this. Thursday I hopped on the plane, flew all the way pretty much across the country. And um, I got in kind of late at night into my hotel. And you know, when you're traveling, that was the day before the trial. If people always ask like, what, I, what should I eat you know, for the, before the trial? My recommendation is to like, don't change anything. You know, you should always be eating relatively healthy. Like for me, I do like a big on the 80-20 rule. So 80% of my diet, you know, is like super, super healthy. And I'll splurge a lot with the 20% of unhealthy foods. As I got closer and closer, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, coming up to this trial, I kind of just cut out the 20% unhealthy foods, but just focused on what I always eat, the healthy 80%, you know. Tons of eggs, tons of high quality protein, chicken breast, turkey, you know, ground turkey, fish, um, brown rice, I had lots of fruit and veggies, I had, uh, what else did I have? I had like mashed potatoes, I've had um, all, all sorts of stuff that you always see, it's nothing's changed, like I'm always eating the, the same stuff that I always eat, but I just didn't have that bowl of chocolate ice cream at night, or you know, if I'm choosing between going out to Chipotle or I'm choosing to stay in and making my own chicken and veggies and rice, I'll make my own chicken and veggies and rice. So just a little tiny minor changes, and then the day before the trial, what I ate was, it was honestly the travel day, which was really hard because it's hard to tailor your, or make your meals exactly what you want when you're in an airport. If you guys have ever had, you know, flown across the country and been, left your house at 7 a.m. and didn't arrive to your hotel until 8 o'clock at night and you're gone the entire day, it's hard to get 
good meals because you want stuff that is actually fast. But I think I did a pretty good job. In the morning, I woke up really early and made myself four eggs, and I had a, ban <clears throat> had a banana with that. And then I went to uh, the airport. I bought myself a protein shake. I bought myself some raw almonds, and I bought myself an egg croissant. So that's what I had. I had an egg croissant, and I saved the protein shake and the almonds for the flight over. Um, they didn't give you a meal on the flight, which was weird. The, the flight was like five hours, five hour flight, and there was no meal. You could pay for a meal, but there's no meal given. But I guess that's what you get when you uh, order, order the cheap stuff, the cheap ticket. But yeah, so no, no meal on the plane, but I just had my almonds and my protein shake and that kind of filled me up. And then once I got to the hotel, it was like eight o'clock at night. And <clears throat> I purposely chose a hotel that had a lot of like decent, um, restaurants around me. Like there's a, a big horn or a longhorn steakhouse. There's like a fish grilling spot right over here is a, is a steakhouse. There's Chipotle just down the road. There's like a lot of good, a de semi decent healthy foods that you can get. So I just walked right across the parking lot to like a fish, um, like a nicer restaurant, fish kind of fish grilling restaurant. And I had like a, some grilled cod and some brown rice and some green beans as well as some bread before the meal. So kind of high in carbs, good meal, good protein, super healthy, came back here and I watched a little episode of Great British Bake Off before I, uh, before I went to bed around 11. I woke up at eight o'clock in the morning. Um, I was still tired because the time change is a little bit different. Where I'm back in California, it was 5 a.m. for me. So definitely was a, a bigger, um, you know, waking up at eight was like waking up at 5 a.m. again. So it was kind of like, yeah, but um, but it was okay. And then so, it, but since there was like kind of like it was a colder day today, they actually pushed the trial back two hours, so I could have some time to kind of got, got breakfast. And the breakfast, you know, was like the Continental Hotel breakfast. So it was like, I got some eggs. I got one sausage sausage link. I got an apple, a banana, and then I got uh, a yogurt and a cup of coffee. And so that was my breakfast. I grabbed some other stuff just in case I was gonna go to the stadium and got hungry if and if I was the second game, and then uh, yeah, so that was like my meals leading up to, up to this combine. So nothing like crazy, but I think what so many people like they're like, what should I eat before these trials? Because your whole diet is unhealthy. Like you're just eating shit, and then you think that two days before the trial you can start working out or you can start eating healthy, and then you're gonna have a great trial. It doesn't work like that. Like you need to think long term. So I'm. you should always be eating healthy. You should always be doing everything right, always training, always working out, always st staying relatively fit so that when you do hear that you have a combine or a trial coming up in two weeks, it's, it's not panic mode. It's like perfect, I'm ready, I'm prepared. Just make a little a little bit of tweaks, but no, nothing else changes. And then so um, I'll talk about like the full, like today, what, what, what happened at the combine. Um, so we showed up and we got there at 10, 15 in the morning. Uh, that was when we had to ch uh, check in. I got there at like 10, 10, so really good timing. You just sign in, um, say I'm Matt Sheldon. They handed me the two shirts, a blue one and a white one, which I gotta actually hang up now so it doesn't get smelly in case I'm blue again tomorrow. But um, hand you a blue and a white one uh, with a number on it so they can see who you are on the field. And then you just sit in the, uh, kind of like in the, uh, in the what is that, like press box almost, or like kind of like a meeting area, the VIP room, the VIP room of the stadium. So there, were, there was like 40 guys, I'd say, 40 or 50 guys, and you sit there and you're kind of talking around, you sign a waiver to, so you don't sue the club in case you get hurt out there, um, but you're just talking, kind of like shoot the shit with whoever you're around. And um, then the coach came in, one of the assistant coaches, he kind of briefed us on how, <laughs> um, I gotta remember to cut that off. <clears throat> I just said the team's name, but uh, I just don't, you know, and people, I, I don't want to say the team's name because now I'm kind of in a position where I have a lot of people following me and I've had this at the end of St. Louis FC when I was over at St. Louis, but when you have a lot of people following you and like if I wasn't starting or if like I didn't even make the travel roster, a lot of people would comment like, why isn't Matt starting? Where's Matt? You know, Matt Sheldon should be starting and I didn't like that. I, I love the support, but I didn't like seeing like why like you guys in the comment section saying and why am I not starting? Where am I? I think that was just kind of like not rude, but like I think it was just a little not the right way to go about it because you know the other right back 
Wes out there was a great right, right back, and he would deserve to start over me some weeks. Some weeks he was better than me. Some weeks he was just cleaner in training, and he deserved to start, and he would get the start. And then to have all those comments like, oh, why is Matt not starting? Matt should be starting. I just It made me feel bad. And I didn't, I didn't like that a lot. So I don't want it to be like to say where I'm at right now because I don't want the, their social media is kind of being hit up or people being like, you need to sign Matt. I know he was at your trial. If you don't sign Matt, blah, 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 blah. I don't want any publicity, negative or positive. I want to come in. I want to do the trial. And if they like me, then I'll sign. If they don't, they don't. I don't want the, the, all the stuff that comes along with it. Um, even though it could be a good thing, but it could also be a bad thing. So that's why I'm keeping it a secret. But um, again, absolutely thank you so much for all the support. And I really, I know you guys' intentions aren't bad, but it can come off as bad and it can be perceived as bad by, I think I could perceive it as, the, as a negative way with, you know, if you're kind of saying that the other right back or the other players don't aren't deserving it of the, the starting spot or they're not deserving of their spot on the team or whatever. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So anyway, the coach, uh, the assistant coach about the trial, he kind of talked about, uh, what to expect with the team. He talked about how they kind of run things. He introduced some people. Um, he thanked us for coming out, kind of briefed us on the stadium and what's, what it was going to be. And pretty much it was, uh, just that he said that out of all 50 of us, they kind of split us up into two teams or no, four teams in, into two different games. So there'd be one game on the main field that was played first with the blue and the white team. And then after that game was done, then there was the next game. And then all the other guys would play in that game. Um, so yeah, so it was it was good. And I was on the blue team and I was in the first game, which I was really thankful for because it's nothing worse is when you get there and you're all excited, you know, and then you have to sit and watch for an hour and a half, maybe two hours before you can even get ready. Like that's when my butterflies and my nerves are always kind of going is the before time. And then as soon as you get on the field, as soon as you start playing, like it's gone, and the butterflies are gone, and you're just playing, and having fun, and doing your thing. It's that that it's that anticipation that kills you. So I was pumped that I was the first team um, in the first game, and I and I was even more pumped that I was starting, and that I had like you know because we had three 30 minute halves or three 30 minute thirds, and I was the first two 30s. So some people were the first and the third, some people were the second and the third, some people were the first and the second. I was the first and the second. So literally. Got it over with quickly. I did my job. I was out of there. So you basically, you know, they said, okay, if you're in the first group, go down to the locker room, change, get all dressed up, if you're taped up if you need. I got my ankles taped for this. And then you go out to the field like 20 minutes later and you just start the warm up. The coaches lead you through like a good warm up. You split off, you do the normal, you know, some passing drills, some possession drills, which funny, we actually did, you know, this, if you guys have watching my, been watching my off season series, we did the square passing, which is just kind of like, uh, it, we just got a square. And you know how I always go to like touch around the side and then play it to your partner. And then it, it was kind of like touch around the side and do a give and go around the edges. And then it was touch around the corner and then do a, uh, the short, short, long pass. Literally the three things that I've been doing in my own trainings with the guys is what we did to warm up. So, I mean, it didn't mean anything except it kind of showed that this is what the pro teams do. This is what the pro, t uh, like I just, everywhere I go, every pro team does the same exact simple fundamental training stuff. And it's just really interesting to see. So, you know, when you see those comments like, this training's so simple, like you guys aren't going to improve. Well, that's what the, the pro teams do too. So, that was kind of funny to see. Um, we got a short warm up in, it was like 25 minutes, 30 minutes, you know, the normal, you know, do you do your basic jogging and your movements and your sharp stuff and your open the gate and close the gate, your hip flexors and your, you just do the dynamic stretching and everything, go to some passing drills, go to some possession drills, and then we hopped right into it. I was, I played right back for the, like I said, the first and the second 30 minute uh, thirds. And then, um, yeah, it went really well. Like it went really well. The first 10 minutes, I'd say I always like to play really simple to get the flow of the game. You know, and the, the, I actually got the ball from the very, from the kickoff. So I was like the first one, one of the first guys to ever touch the ball, which I really liked too. I like getting that first touch out of the way. The ball came back to me and I always play very simple for the first one. Get the pass right, get the touch right, and you'll work your way into the game. So I just got the ball. Um, I played it right to my right mid. He played it right back to me. I opened up and I played it right to my center back who switched the side, um, switched the point of attack. So perfect. You know, I got a couple touches in. I was in it 
And I, there went all my butterflies, all the nerves, you know, everything's gone at that point. So then it's just a normal, it's just a game. You know, you're just playing, you're scrimmaging against the other team. And it went really well. I mean, obviously, I haven't played a full, like, actual game 11 v 11 since august of like august 20th so it's been a while but i've been keeping fit been training with the tulsa roughnecks i was training with you know i've been you guys have been seeing my training i've been in the gym a ton so i didn't really i felt like i wasn't like my peak fitness but i didn't feel out of shape at all which was good um and the game it went really well i didn't make any bad mistakes i attacked forward decently well i got a few really good crosses in um my touch felt sharp everything felt really good so I mean, that's a, it is exactly what I wanted for the first day, you know, just to have a solid first day, good first impression. Um, yeah, and I attacked. I had some really good runs. I had some really good plays, and I'm happy with it. You know, obviously, you're going to lose the ball a couple times. You're gonna, I never lost the ball in my own half. Whenever I lost the ball, I was going forward. I did get megged once, but I also megged one other guy at the corner. But, um, yeah, it's just, it was really good. And I, if people ask, too, like in those trials or something, you'll make a mistake. And it's hard to like then get over it. And I understand. And the first thing I, I would say to that is like, I mean, you look at, you can watch the highest level in the world play. I mean, look at De Gea, look at, you know, all these guys that are messing up. Even Messi and Ronaldo make really bad mistakes sometimes. They'll miss sitters. They'll lose the ball when they shouldn't lose the ball. And if they can mess up, then it's okay for you to mess up, you know? Like if, if, if the best right backs in the world are losing the ball on those plays, I can lose the ball. And it's obviously not a good thing. I'm not like saying like, yeah, that's fine. You can lose the ball. But I'm just saying that can help you mentally be like, look, one mistake in the game is not the end of the world. And, and coaches know that. You know, Even when I'm looking at players and, and scouting a little bit just to see if they make a mistake, but I can see the intention or I can see you know quickly as them as a player, I'm like, whatever. They had the right idea. I can see it. It's all good. But what you can see as a coach, you know, is if you make the mistake and then you can't get timid afterwards. And that's a very bad thing. And that kind of brings me up to my next point, which is uh, body language and faking confidence. And this is something that was huge in the earlier parts of my career when it was really important to, um, to display confidence even if you didn't have it. I'm gonna pause this real quick because this video is gonna cut out. I don't want to cut out in the middle of a good part, but I'm gonna restart it. Just a sec, hold on. <clears throat> so body language. Body, body language is crucial because immediately, immediately, if you're watching someone did play, immediately, I can, I've seen this with trials, I've seen, seen this with open combines, both first person, second person. You can tell who's confident and wants the ball, and you can tell somebody who's timid and shy and trying to hide away from the ball. And immediately, the person who's confident and looks like they're confident, they seem like a better player, you know, because they're confident. That's how it works. And even if you're not confident, I'm not saying if you're not confident, you're screwed. Because if you're not confident, you have to pretend to be confident. I remember my first few trials when I really wasn't confident if I could play at the pro level. I believed it, but I didn't have full confidence that that ball would come to me. And I would tell myself, just pretend, like show everybody around you that you are calm, cool, collected, everything's fine. Even if on the inside you're like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, you know, I want this, I'm nervous for this, I really hope I can get beat it. On the outside, you're like, yeah, I got this, ball's coming in, here we go, let's play. And then you're just faking that. And if you, the more you fake it and the more stuff starts going well, the more all of a sudden it starts becoming from, it starts going from fake confidence to actual real confidence. And the more trials you go on, the more open stuff, and the more success you start getting, the more you train, the better you prepare, the more and more confidence you have in total. Like now I'm going to these trials and I'm 100% confident. I always get nervous, I always get butterflies, but I'm always 100% confident that it's gonna work out. And I'm, I just know I'm gonna play well because I've prepared the right way, I've done everything right for, I can't even remember the last time I did it, it stop training or took a break or um, and didn't really eat the right way for the entire week or do whatever. Like I've just been doing everything right. So I just am so confident that everything should be going right on the field when I play. I know I've prepared the right way so it's going to work out. And then I get there and then I just make a little bit extra effort to show a little bit more confidence in my body language, my body movement. And everybody around you picks up on that. They start feeling that you're confident and they can either build themselves up or they'll kind of like shy away from you. But you can show that you're confident and it's it's so, that's one of my biggest tips for going to these trials. So overall, it was a really, really good uh, good combine. Um, 
I actually talked to, there's, so this was technically a combine because combines usually have multiple teams watching and an invite like a tryout usually is for one team. So this is mainly for one team, but there's also two other coaches from two different teams that were there watching as well. And um, it was really cool because uh, all three coach or two coaches actually from the two different teams came up to me and talked to me and said that they knew who I was and that uh, they were excited to see me play. And then I haven't talked to anybody from the actual the actual team who invited me out, like deep conversation. But um, I'll try to get a conversation in with them tomorrow after the uh, after the second day. <clears throat> so now um, I'm at the hotel. I got came back to the hotel and I just showered, changed. I went and got Chipotle, and then I just which was about a mile walk, which is really good. Kind of get the legs moving, you know, do a little bit of active recovery after the after the the game this morning. We do a little bit of movement. Um, I got Chipotle, came back, and then I literally did, I'm just recording this right now. So the plan for the rest of the day is to chill. <clears throat> I want to keep my feet up. I want to. I'll be in bed a lot. I have an interview later tonight, so I got an interview. I'm gonna kind of edit this up. I got some other work to do, so I'll be on my computer. But really, really relaxed day, kind of hanging out here, and that's kind of like the. Uh, how these things work. I mean, anytime you're on a trial, when I was around Germany bouncing around, I spent so much time in my hotel room or by myself or going out to dinners by myself and all this stuff. Um, and then tomorrow is the last day. Tomorrow, same thing. It's two different games. They're going to send out the, uh, the teams later tonight. So I'm guessing what usually happens is that they split you up into a, a team, the first game that maybe they're looking at the, the players that they're more serious about looking or it could be the second game but basically one of the games is usually with the two teams that they're more into the players they think are the better two teams um, with the better players and they'll mix up the teams but they want to have like the, the higher quality players in one game and then all the second guys in the other game I don't know you know sometimes it's the first game sometimes the second game but yeah and most trials I've been to you know uh, like with I've been in the the top game every single time except for the combine in Florida I didn't make like the, they, call, they even had a name for it. It was the all-star game. I didn't make the all-star game, which I was pretty upset about. But um, but yeah, I mean, that just, it shows like, uh, it, they definitely want to see the best players playing against the best players. So they saved that for the second day. So they'll email us up the actual teams. So we'll see that and uh, go from there. Um, anyway, the last thing I want to talk to about, uh, talk to you guys about is like the, the, the downside of this, the, the stuff that you don't see. You see a lot of the good stuff, but you don't see the bad stuff. And the thing that killed me um, about this trial that I've, I talked, will, or will talk a little bit, I, I don't know, this video will probably come out, this podcast will come out before the video, but I will talk about it. And I had on this weekend, this was the weekend of the 6th through the 8th or something, 7th through the 8th, and I had a, a reunion with my college team planned for like six months. We were planning it back in like July, August, about finally, because we're all, you know, the entire team, once you're done playing college, goes and gets jobs and goes and moves everywhere. The guys in LA, San Diego, like Portland, like Arizona, all spread out basically around kind of more of the West Coast or even the US. And we were all like, we, you know, we should get a, a, a little reunion going. We haven't seen some of the guys in like four years. And so we wanted to finally do something and I was so excited for it. Um, <clears throat> and uh, sorry, I just got a text from my agent actually. He wanted to know about how it went. But anyway, so I completely forgot what I was talking about. God, I completely forgot. Uh, hold on, sacrifices. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so my college, my college guy, my college, all my college teammates, we're going to do this. There's like 15 guys. We're going to get a big house in San Diego. They're all going to go down there. And it was just going to be a weekend where we could hang out, talk, have, drink a little beer, you know, uh, and just catch up and just have like, you know, it's your best friends. Finally, I was going to see them. I was so, so excited for that. It literally was going to be the one time pretty much of the year that I was going to have some beers let loose and just, just have fun and have a social interaction with people other than my only social interaction being through soccer and training. So I was so excited for that. Literally, I've been looking forward to that for since we started planning it in July. And all of a sudden, like, it was so frustrating. I get that call from my agent. And he was like, yo, 
uh, I got a trial for you. Really, seems really interested, blah, 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 blah. It's this weekend. And I'm like, I immediately, when he said it's the weekend of the 6th to the 9th, I was like, my heart just kind of like sunk into my stomach. And it, I don't want to say like, it's like it was a bad because I was so stoked. So stoked. I mean, if I had to choose any time, a thousand times, I would choose an invite only combine completely over a social interaction. And that's partly to why I'm, I am here today versus it's not with a nine to five job, but it's still, you know, it, I'm a human. I, I like having friends. I like those kind of things. And I was a little gutted that I wasn't going to be able to attend my reunion. So I told my agent like immediately, I didn't even have to think about it. I was just like, yeah, I can be there. I can be there for sure. I can get my flight. I'll get the hotel right now and I'll confirm that I can be there. So he's like, awesome, let's do it. And he talked to the coach. Um, but yeah, so I had to basically go and talk to my friends and be like, I uh, I can't make it, guys. Like, it sucks. And they were all a little bit gutted as well. Like, they, I'm usually the one. And there's a couple other guys, you know, Armando and we have Elliot Horde as well who are playing pro. Um, but we're usually the ones as playing pros that it's hard to meet up with. You know, everybody else has normal nine to five jobs, you know, in the week. And so weekend they can do these trips. But we purposely planned it in December. So it was in the off season of the USL. So Armando's, uh, Elliot, and me could come back. And unfortunately, I just, this this opportunity came up. So it is hard. And, it, and, and what made it really hard, I think, is that last night I came into my hotel. And it was like 8 o'clock. And so I had to walk down the street. And I had dinner. And when you're on the trials, you don't know anybody. So <laughs> I don't even know anybody in this entire state. So I had dinner. And I was just walking in the restaurant. It was like, hey, table for one. And they're you know, like, okay, yeah, right this way. And then you sit and eat dinner by yourself. And it's kind of like a little sad thing. You know, you're sitting in a state that you know nobody, eating dinner by yourself. And all your, and I'm looking at my texts and all my friends are like, I'll be there in 10 minutes. I'm finally coming to the house. Like all is blowing up. So that was hard. And I mean, that's just kind of like what... It, what the behind the scenes life is of a pro is like. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of dinners by yourself. There's a lot of hotels like this. And then after I had dinner by myself, I walked by myself back to the hotel room and I watched Great British Bake Off on Netflix in my bed by myself. So, you know, it, it's sacrifices. It's just all sacrifices, but it's more important for me to sacrifice that stuff, the fun stuff in the short term for the long term goal of continuing to play pro soccer continuing to achieve my dreams and just keep pushing. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I would be lying to say if I wasn't really, really upset, you know, I'm, it's your best friends all hanging out, having fun. It's the, gonna, was going to be my probably most fun weekend of the entire year, you know, and I'm, I should rephrase that the only weekend pretty much where I have fun the entire year. Uh, and, and then it's just, you know, it's, and that is not a unique situation for my life. I mean, I've missed out on a lot. I've missed out on a lot of um, opportunities socially. You know, I never got to see my brother graduate. Never got to, never got to see my sister graduate. Never got to see um, some really big milestones in people's lives. Uh, with my family, friends, all that stuff. Never, never been to a music festival like Coachella. I've never been to anything um, never had a spring break, like a, a college spring break, you know, never got to go through welcome week of a college because I was always in season in my middle of my preseason of, of college. Um, never, I, I think I just had my first Halloween where I dressed up and went out this year. Uh, and so you make a lot of sacrifices that even like for now, like uh, New Year's Eve this year, I'm, I'm going to be training, I'll be working and so I'm not going to go out. I actually have a flight that, that day from Portland back to San Diego. So, and I don't want to, it's not a pity party because my life is amazing. And the, I sacrifice all of that for a cause, for this, for this goal of playing professional soccer. But you, like, but, you know, you see so much of like, you sleep, I grind, blah, 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 like that, like, you know, motivational stuff. But and although it is true, like a lot of people are partying and I'm working or I'm resting and a lot of people are just sleeping in and I'm waking up at five and working and working out and doing all my stuff, but it doesn't make it any less hard to miss it. You know, I get FOMO. I, I, uh, I miss out on a lot of stuff and it's hard because I'm a very social person. I love hanging out with friends. I love 
going to social events, but I have to sacrifice it in order to achieve my goals of what I want to do. And I definitely do have my fun nights. You know, I have my uh, my times where I get to let loose finally, and I get to be with my friends. But they're very few and far between. It's, I'm not living a normal twenty year olds, or I'm not twenty. I'm twenty six now, but I'm not living a normal twenty to twenty nine year old life. Um, and that comes with a lot of pros, many, many, many pros, but it also comes with a lot of cons. Um, but I wouldn't change anything. So that is, um, that's the podcast. That's my tryout experience, everything. I, I was really, I was really curious to see how this solo session was going to work. Um, I, I didn't know if I'd have enough to talk about, but I guess I'm just a chatterbox. So I just keep talking. I think the right now we're looking at like 35 minutes. So I will also kind of talk right now about, <clears throat> um, a little bit of like mental preparation too about trials. Hold on. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, but yeah, so people ask too, I get asked a lot about, um, visual visualization. I struggle with that word visualization, meditation or whatever mental, mentally how to prepare for a trial. I've talked a lot about the physical components. Um, I personally don't do much when it comes to that. I will say that I visualize, but it's more of like involuntary, like invol I'm <laughs> these words involuntarily, involuntarily visualizing. Wow. That is a tough one. Um, but I like, for example, I'm laying in bed. I watched my Great British Bake Off, like the little uh, wuss that I am, and I watched it. But then I was rolled over. I closed my computer. It was 11:30, and I just was like closing my eyes, and all I could see in my head was like me me dribbling down the side, stepping over the ball, pushing it down, and crossing it in. And I actually did that exact play today. Um, so I do that visualization, but it wasn't like, I didn't sit down and make time for it. Like it just happens. Like I'm thinking about the game so much and thinking about my plays that it involuntarily happens a lot. So I do do visualization, but it's not like set premeditated, like, okay, let's think about what to visualize about. Now let's do the next step of what to visualize. I'm just thinking about how I want to play in the game and that stuff kind of just happens, you know? And I always see myself from a third person. It's weird. I'm never like first person doing it. I'm always like third person, like as a like controller and I'm looking like I'm like five feet up and behind myself doing the step over, pushing it down and crossing it in. So that's just kind of like what I do as well. Um, meditation. I don't meditate. I have before. If it, I am a big believer. If it works for you, it works for you. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. Um, I don't know. I can never take it as seriously as I want it, want to. Um, but if it works for you and you like doing it and you think it helps, then a hundred percent go for it. Same with visualization. If you can't involuntary and involuntarily, uh, visualize and, uh, you, uh, you need that premeditated. Okay. Now I'm going to visualize this. Now I'm going to visualize that. Then fine, go for it. There's no right or wrong way to do anything. And that's why it's so, that's why there's so much confusion about it because like there's so many possibilities of whatever helps people, even for music, you know, there's people on this combine that had these big beats headphones on listening to their music, you know, getting pumped for the tryout. I'm the type of person that I can't do that. Literally cannot do that. I need to be calm. You know, I need to be before I need to be chatting with the guy next to me and talking about where he's from, talking about his hometown, almost distracting myself. Cause if I get too pumped up, I come out and I'm not like calm, cool and collected. I'm not making the smart decision. I'm go, 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 go. And I'm, and it's out of, oh, and it's not go, 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 go. Like, good it's out of control like dribbling way too much making rash decisions i need to calm down and i found that it took me a while i didn't really realize that till i was playing with orange county and i realized i like my teammates were like you need to chill like chill to take take a deep breath and i realized before i was listening to pump up music and i'm like okay and then so i started just t talking and hanging out and i played so much better so much better and so i've definitely realized that about myself like before big games before like huge games like the semifinal of the USL playoffs with Orange County I was literally goofing off like talking with somebody but as soon as that you know I step on the field it's serious but the whole build up to it I don't like building up anticipation I just like goofing off goofing off as soon as I step on the field to warm up it's game time but yeah but again 
whatever works for you. If you're the type of player that needs that build up, you need to get pumped up for a game, then go for it. There's tons of players out there like that. If you're like me, and you're like, no, 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 I can't do it. I need to be having fun, goofing off, joking around, then go for it. If you like to listen to music, but you like a little softer music, you know, go for it. Whatever, whatever works for you. But that's the stuff that I get asked out about a lot. And uh, oh, meal timing. That's another question I get. So meal timing before uh, the the tryout. So they said that on the the roster or, or not the roster, the schedule that the first game was at 11. So if the kickoff is at 11, I like to basically have my meal, like my big meal three hours before that, three to four hours. So I woke up at eight and that's when I got my big breakfast of the eggs and the uh, sausage link and the fruit and the yogurt. That was three hours before kickoff. And then on the way there, I think I had like half a banana or like a little muffin or something. Um, just to get a little food. And if I was the, if I wasn't that first game and I was, you know, I didn't, my game didn't start till one o'clock, then I would have had, uh, I had my bag, I had another banana, I had two more apples, I had two muffins. So I probably would have had like a muffin, an apple, and a banana as like another little light snack, probably an hour before that one o'clock kickoff, so around noon. Um, and that was hard, because you didn't know, I, I didn't know how to t time that meal. So I just got three hours before the first game, and I said I'll have a second meal if it comes to that. Um, but yeah, so that's what I typically like to do. And that's what we do for most of pro teams. Like, so like with St. Louis FC or with Orange County or whoever, whatever the game was, we would probably have our meal about four hours before. And then if you wanted to two hours before or up to an hour before the game, um, you could have like a very light, like fast dissolving carbs or something like a little granola bar, a banana, um, trying to think like maybe we had a little bit of peanut butter sometimes, uh, some fruit, whatever, you know? So that was kind of like how it worked. But anyway, that is going to be it for this podcast. It's just, just me going off all about tryouts and my experience about it, both good and bad. I have one more day tomorrow. I'm on my little spinny chair right now. I have one more day tomorrow, and hopefully things go um, things go well. So we'll see. Uh, and again, the goal for this is to meet some more coaches and either get invited into preseason, but the main goal is to get a contract here soon. But you never know what the teams are looking for, how badly they need your position, if they need your position at all, or even if they even like how I played today. So we'll see. You just can't take anything personally. You just got to keep going for it, and uh, it will work out. All right, so that's the podcast. I'll catch you guys on the next Against All... Po all uh, I'll catch you guys... <laughs> I'll catch you guys in the next episode of the Against All Odds podcast, and we'll be with Mimi next time. Peace. Peace.